What's up YouTube? Welcome to another exciting personal finance video where I'm talking about stock markets, saving, investing, debt, gold and silver, precious metals, all that good stuff. And especially things like passive income. That's what today's episode is going to focus on folks. Um, so if you guys haven't already, um, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. Uh, quick disclaimer, as usual, guys, I am not a financial advisor, so please do your own research or consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions like buying gold and silver or stocks or anything I say and do on this uh, channel. Okay, guys, uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, get into it now. So every uh, month I, I put out these basically two two financial reports that I'm looking at. Um, I measure my net worth. I know my last video, I think my last video, I mentioned that. Um, and basically, I just kind of look at all, all the value of all my assets. I uh, subtract it from all my liabilities, things like my mortgage balance. Uh, you know, if you have a car loan or a credit card or whatever, um, line of credit, whatever. Um, and then, you know, assets minus liabilities equals your net worth. And we always hope that that number is a positive number and that it keeps growing. Um, if yours is not a positive number, then um, head on over to my Road to Wealth and Freedom and check out um, my net worth reports. And you can kind of get a sense for what I do to build net worth um, and what uh, what might help you out. To do the same uh, and then the next report that I do is I do a monthly passive income report um, for the last decade I've focused a lot about building passive income what do I mean by passive in income I'm talking about money that you don't really have to work for now quick quick uh, disclaimer uh, I use my blog income as uh, passive income as well you know, is is there work involved in running uh, a website or whatever? Sure, there is, but it's really minor. And if you love writing and stuff like that, it's basically, you know, passive income. Um, it does take a little bit of work. You know, doing these YouTube videos is a little bit of time effort, um, but uh, I enjoy doing it. And as long as I do so, um, I'll continue to do these. Hopefully, hopefully uh, a lot of you guys know all this stuff already and you guys are just killing it. Um, but, uh, for those of you who don't, um, and who are maybe curious about earning passive income or investing in precious metals or stocks or real estate, um, I hope that you can basically learn from my example, including my mistakes and, um, grow wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Um, but yeah, so, um, First, we'll just kind of give a basic uh, market kind of rundown. So the Dow is above 30,000. Today's December, I think, December 8th, 2020. Dow is around uh, 30,150 points, something like that. S&P is, uh, let me see here. I just got it. Uh, what is the S&P at? Thirty oh it broke thirty seven hundred fantastic okay gold is at eighteen seventy six eighteen seventy seven we'll call it silver twenty four dollars seventy six of course that is in U S dollars oil is at forty five dollars sixty nine cents um yeah so just last week gold was trading super low it was uh you know seventeen uh, I think around the seventeen sixty mark something like that. Um, now it's back up a hundred bucks basically. So I nixed my chances to pick up another gold maple for the year end. Oh, well, 2021 is just around the corner. I'll probably jump in sometime then. Um, the markets have recovered splendidly from this sell off. Um, and there's a lot of people now calling for massive inflation. Um, I've also seen some uh, commentary and videos by uh, some people who are calling for massive deflation. So we're still kind of, although I must admit the deflation voices are getting getting much more quieter. Fewer and fewer people are really um, warning, sounding the alarm about deflation. 
um, but uh, and more and more it's kind of on the inflationary bandwagon now. So um, yeah, it just goes to show, right? Stay invested, um, follow your plan. Hopefully you're well diversified to begin with. You own things like stocks, maybe even some bonds, some cash, real estate, gold and silver. Um, you want real assets, you want some paper assets. I know, you know, people are really concerned about the US dollar collapsing um, due to all the money printing, the debasement of currencies and just worldwide, it's a huge problem. But um, fact of the matter is we all got to kind of live, live life. Um, to live life, you need cash. Cash is usually dollars, right? So um, my my approach has been, I'm, I'm basically, I own everything. I own a little bit of everything. I don't own just gold or silver. I don't own just stocks. I don't own just a little bit of cash. I don't own just a house. Like you want to kind of spread your money around, spread your, uh, spread risk around basically. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I just want to kind of take it back and, uh, talk about passive income. Cause I just, pa uh, just published my passive income report. I think it was on Friday. I threw that out there for the second month in a row. It was, um, uh, just about $4,000. Now that's not really that bad, all that bad at all. Um, that's all, that's basically somebody else working in, in our house. You know, I work, my wife works, but you know, when you're getting $4,000 a month in passive income, that's like having a whole other person working, earning a paycheck, coming home, giving that money to you, essentially. Uh, is it, And a lot of that was, of course, is money that like we really don't, um, it just comes from our investments, right? We don't work for it. We make money while we sleep by, you know, investing in some dividend stocks, mutual funds and ETFs. Um, we got uh, I, I run my website that generates passive income in the form of like display ads. Ironically, I find the less I do on my, the less I publish on my blog, the more money I actually make. <laughs> so I used to try to publish quite a bit. Um, and I noticed that, you know, it's just, I, I, it's kind of like the law of diminishing return. Right. Like the more you the more effort you put into something over time, it seems almost like the less and less you get out of it. Um, so I've just basically stick with what works. Hey, I publish my net worth, my passive income each month. Let the guys know what I'm doing. Uh, I publish things about coins like gold and silver coins, bullion, um, collector coins, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, investment assets than I usually do. Sometimes I do like a recap post where I just basically talk about what's going on in the markets and that. And um, yeah, but all of that stuff stays out there, especially if you can write um, what's known as like evergreen content. These are articles that are going to stand the test of time. Uh, so for all you aspiring bloggers out there, uh, my advice would be Write some good, solid articles, um, preferably in like a niche type area, and um, they will stand the test of time. If they're well written and, uh, you know, they're just authoritative in that niche or whatever, you're going to do very, very well. Um, you basically will never have to. I actually don't really have to write anything for my website. Um, it will continue to earn, you know, a set amount of money uh, each and every month, regardless whether or not I do this or not. Um, I still do it because, um, I don't know, part of it is just kind of for me. I want to kind of keep myself honest, keep it real. Um, you know, if my net worth is going in the wrong direction, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. And that kind of motivates me to uh, to do better, to uh, to be smarter and to uh just to do better so um yeah over time i find in general um uh, my latest net worth report were at 1.42 let's call it um i found over the past six seven years my net worth has increased by about 100 grand a year and it, it the odd thing about it it really doesn't seem to matter what happens um 
you know, the markets can have a good year, markets can have a bad year. It really doesn't ma- like seem to matter. It just unfailingly increases a hundred grand a year. Part of that is saving. Part of that is investing, investing into a down market so that when the recovery comes, my net worth just surges ahead. Um, paying down debt's a big one too. Uh, when the markets are trading at all-time highs and I don't know where to put my m- money, basically the default position is, well, pay down some debt, pay down, make a lump sum payment on my mortgage. I mean, one day these mortgage payments will come to an end and then what do you have? You Your largest asset basically is a paid for home. You know, it doesn't really matter if you have a job. You don't really like, you know, other than some overheads, your monthly overhead. Um, you know, for many people, their their rent or mortgage payment, that's the largest chunk of the budget. Next comes food. Um, then maybe a car payment or, or utilities or whatever. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you can knock out a big, big, big piece of your monthly overhead by taking out the mortgage... I mean, you're going to be light years ahead and it really doesn't matter at that point what happens to the markets. You who cares um, if the economy does well or does not. If you have a job or does or, or lose your job, you have a house that's paid for. You don't need to really worry too much and it doesn't take a whole lot of money to fund, you know, uh, the life of somebody who is debt free, has a bunch of investments. Like that's the other thing, too. If you fund your retirement, your kids, uh college funds and and uh, you have a little bit of savings maybe you got some uh, alternative assets like gold and silver you got some real estate like i think you're good so uh, that's sort of been my approach Um, i'm kind of all over the place i have a lot of different things but um, there is an over overall strategy and approach and um, a big piece of that approach is earning passive income because I could lose my job tomorrow. Then what? Well, I mean, if you're earning, you know, $2,500, $3,000, $4,000 a month in passive income that you're not working for, you are good to go. Especially if you don't have a mortgage. Um, I can't wait to have my mortgage paid off. You know, and people now are talking like, oh, oh, um, mortgage re- interest rates are so low you're crazy to pay your mortgage off you could like earn i don't know six percent in the stock market or ten percent like i look at it this way it's just you know what if your mortgage interest rate is two percent three percent even one percent that is a risk free return and not only that we use we pay for our mortgage in after tax dollars so that one, two, or three percent after tax could easily be five percent pre-tax. You know what are most people's problems? For me, my my thoughts. I've read a lot of personal finance stuff. I've seen a lot of like you know gurus talking and and just basically in life you meet a lot of people and most people have the same problem. They simply do not have enough money. Now, it doesn't matter what they do with that money. Uh, maybe they made bad choices or, or whatever. Nonetheless, the, the, the major problem is that people just do not have enough money. And that to me says, you know, we need to not only save, invest, but we need to kind of get ourselves out of debt, get ourselves into a position where we're able to earn things like passive income um, and uh, constantly have that cash flow. Robert Kiyosaki wrote that Rich Dad, Poor Dad book back in the late 90s now that's that the central theme in that book was earn income buy assets that generate income um and you know nowadays you know real estate is has in many places across the the globe real estate has never been more expensive than it is today so can we all uh, do Kiyosaki's approach and, you know, let's just uh, double down on super nosebleed level expensive real estate and earn passive income. Good luck. You're probably lucky if you break even. And that's what a lot of landlords are doing now. So what am I doing? I don't own, I no longer own rental properties anymore. I got out of that about three years ago. Um, maybe I should have held on. Who knows? Hindsight's always twenty twenty, but you never know. Fact of the matter is, 
Um, I was looking at my risk. I was looking at my reward and I determined that, you know, we had some really good market gains in the real estate market. You know, there was high demand for all that. I left, I got out. Um, it was out of town, uh, rental properties, which made me have to hire a property management company. And, um, it was just kind of a big headache. Could I have done it, um, run it myself? Not really. I had two small kids. Like that's the thing. Um, if you're going to get into the real estate market, um, my advice based on my own experience and that of others is to have deep pockets because when your tenants don't pay, you got to pay that mortgage. You got to pay those bills. Um, if you run into unexpected expenses, like we do with our normal house that we like live in, you need to come up with that money. And um, of course, the real estate guys, it's all debt, 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 debt. Don't worry about it. It's all write-offs. Well, yes and no. Yes, it's all write-offs. But if you need $10,000 for a new furnace or whatever, a new roof or windows on your house, you need ten grand, and you got to cough that up. And if you're already maxed out, you got line of credits and home equity lines of credits, you got mortgage, good luck trying to find that. You're throwing it on your credit card. Yeah, 28% interest or 30% interest. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're killing it with your tax write-offs. Like, it's ridiculous. You got to be real and keep your head on straight. Um, luckily for me, I had a lot of financial assets and stocks and stuff like that. Um, I had a lot of passive income. My dividend income was very strong. I had some blog income as well that was very strong. Um, in addition to my rental income, which was really good. I had basically kind of like a three-prong approach for passive income. Rental properties generating passive rental income or semi-passive. I had blog income that I got from my website. And I got uh, dividend income from stocks, ETFs, that type of thing. Uh, but I got out of that. Now I'm just into the stocks and the online income. If you have zero dollars, if you are just starting out today and guys, you know, share, you can share this content. I, it'd be much appreciated um, because I really find if I had, if where, what would I do if I started from scratch today? If I had zero dollars, would I try to hustle and come up with a down payment to get into like a mortgage, a rental property, a home or whatever, or you know, am I going to like try to like scrimp, save and try to invest my money at the top of, uh, of a giant stock market? Boom. Um, or and for, I don't know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks for the year, let's say $200 for the year. Uh, start uh, an online business, uh, start a website, start a blog, start something, maybe your own podcast or whatever. I mean, face it. Um the the barriers to entry are virtually none. You can you, you can go get like I use Bluehost. I can throw up a link in the description for you guys, um, and they will actually install WordPress. They'll walk you through everything. If you have an issue, you can, you know, they'll help you out. They've helped me out plenty of times because uh, I am by no means a computer genius. Uh, I don't know anything about coding. Uh, I just like to write, and that's what I do. I just write my my, my thoughts on my, on my website, on my blog, and that generates an income. You know, it, it, did I get rich overnight from it? No, I'm still like people, so many people are doing way better than I am at any of this stuff. Uh, I am by no means like, uh, you know, the, the expert in this area. I just know based on my limited knowledge, my limited experience, what I did, um, could easily be replicated by others. Um, like I said, there's probably, uh, I'm sure on my website, there's tons of room for improvement. Maybe I could do more affiliate sales if I want to push products onto people, which I don't. Um, maybe I could uh, start email marketing campaigns, which I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need to. I don't want to. Um so yeah, that would be my advice. If you have absolutely no money and you want to try to start making something, build, go build something. Go build uh, a financial uh, uh, empire. Go build uh, an online empire. Uh, and maybe you start using the money from that to invest into things like real estate, into stocks, into precious metals, things like that. Um, 
but yeah, no, I'm very happy with these passive income. I remember my early on and my passive income reports, I was making like next to nothing, but it's just that little bit. It's just, it's a process, right? It's rinse, repeat, do it month after month, take some money, set it aside, invest that money and you will gener generate and earn passive income. And that passive income will only grow, reinvest those dividends, reinvest, you know, interest or whatever, reinvest in your uh, website, reinvest in your real estate empire, keep reinvesting, rinse, repeat, and you will with, without a doubt, grow wealthy. But in the meantime, keep your head on straight, stay out of debt. Don't keep up with the Joneses, pay down your mortgage. Hopefully you pay your house off, you know, live a debt light life and you will be very, very happy. That's it guys. I went off for like another 20 minutes here. I'm sorry. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom, and I'll throw out that Bluehost uh, link in uh, the description below. Take care, guys.